Hey guys, it's Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about post-traumatic stress disorder and I want to highlight uh, three important brain regions. I have talked about this topic on my channel in the past, but I'd like to delve just a little bit deeper and talk about three brain regions. And then I also want to talk about the neurobiological impact of trauma. So thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed. And for those who are new to the channel, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button so you can stick around with us and suggest topics for me to talk about, um, share experiences, ask questions, and learn. So um, I think you're going to like this channel if you stick around. The benefits for you in today's video is that you're going to learn about the three most important brain areas in the diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. And I also want to point out the neurobiological foundation and what happens with PTSD. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. So first, um, I want to offer my condolences to uh, the victims of El Paso, Texas tragedy, the massacre there, and um, also the massacre in Dayton, Ohio as well. Both uh, were tremendously painful for a lot of people. I had a few clients. Um, who have family members that were um, in the, the club, in the lounge in Dayton. And I also have um, one or two um, uh, consultations uh, from individuals who um, had family members in El Paso, Texas. So um, the impact of that tragedy was uh, pretty close to me as well. Uh, because of the connections uh, that are attached to me as consultations and, and patients or clients. Um, but the tragedies also were close to me in a different way, close to me as a human who cannot fathom uh, the instability of a discriminatory, um, internally unstable and angry and um, prejudiced individual. Um, it affects me in the sense that it is uh, hard to wrap your mind around the, the sociopathic thought patterns of an individual who had no remorse, no empathy, uh, had no forethought, was very impulsive uh, as a result of preconceived notions and um, discriminatory and prejudiced views. Um, it's just hard to wrap your mind around. In addition to that, I think that um, I was also affected as a therapist uh, because I recognize that wherever we go in society, we're going to be slightly paranoid. It's going to be difficult to feel 100% safe in a movie theater, in a grocery store, in a Sam's Club, in a Walmart, um, in a mall. Um, you know, in a concert, in a club, in a lounge, in a restaurant. Um, we've had so many tragedies that, you know, you almost lose track. You almost become numb, right? Because that's the only response that you can have when something is so very, um, so very traumatizing and, and destabilizing. Um, we had uh, so many issues occur um, in, in the form of a massacre for the past five years straight. Um, as we entered uh, the, the 2000s, as far as the year. And beginning back in 2013, we had uh, a lot of massacres at that time, then 2014, then 2015, then 2016, 2017, 2018, and now here we go in 2019. I'm going to post a video up here that I did about massacres in the United States and, and some of the patterns that I have seen in a lot of my colleagues as well, so I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, but um, I want to go ahead and talk about PTSD because post-traumatic stress disorder, acute or chronic, is something that a lot of people are going to be dealing with after these tragedies. So I want to point out three important brain structures. And the first brain structure is known as the amygdala. The amygdala is a almond sized part of the brain that's located in the middle or the center of the brain. Um, it's um, actually we have a, a, a top or a cortical um, our cerebral, and then we have a middle and a bottom part of the brain, okay? And the amygdala is found in the middle part of the brain. It's an almond-sized structure, and it has a lot to do with our emotional memories. It has a lot to do with the sights and smells and sensory input that triggers flashbacks, right? So the amygdala 
is our emotional memory center. That's the part of the brain that is triggered when we walk past a grocery store and we smell food and it causes a flashback of a memory, right? Whether that's a positive or negative memory. Uh, for people who are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, if they were, let's say for example, hearing gunshots and hiding underneath some of the tables and desks in Walmart as what happened last weekend, then you'll know, you'll be able to see in their behavior that they have been um, um, triggered when they come upon similar sounds, okay? So for example, the pop, pop, pop of a gunshot uh, can create such an imprint in the amygdala that any time popping happens, whether that's popping popcorn, whether that's a pop bottle popping off, whether that's construction on the road, whatever, any popping sounds can trigger that emotional memory of that traumatizing and uh, critical situation. All right, so that's the amygdala. The next part is the hippocampus, and the hippocampus is a part of our brain. It is next to the amygdala, and it actually helps us to recall things, right? It helps us to retrieve memories, and if those memories are traumatic uh, based on crisis, uh, those emotional memories that cause flashbacks and high levels of arousal as if you're re-experiencing the trauma, the hippocampus is responsible for that, okay? It stores and retrieves memories and information, and that's another part of the brain that PTSD really targets, post-traumatic stress, okay? And the third part of the brain is the prefrontal cortex, and as you know, I talk a lot about this on this channel. I'm gonna put some videos up here and some links, and I'll put something in the description box below. Uh, where I talk a little bit more about these brain structures, but the, free, the prefrontal cortex is our executive functioning, right? It's our higher order functioning. It helps us make decisions. It has a lot to do with our personality. It has a lot to do with um, uh, the formation of thought, right? It kind of helps us process things. And it also has a lot to do with our impulsivity. That's why adolescents have a hard time controlling their behavior because the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed. So, so the developing prefrontal cortex really is very impulsive because it's not fully developed yet for adolescents until they hit about 26. So the prefrontal cortex has a lot to do with impulsivity and decision making and higher order thinking. Okay, and the, the, the hippocampus has a lot to do uh, with flashbacks and, and memories and negative attributions, okay, um, and storing of that traumatic, that traumatic memory or that traumatic information. And the amygdala um, has a lot to do with the avoidance behaviors that we have when we have post-traumatic stress disorder, right? So kind of like avoiding the trauma or anything that reminds you of the trauma that has a lot to do with the amygdala, all right? So these are three important parts of the brain that are highly affected by PTSD, uh, whether that's chronic PTSD or acute, okay? So let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about the neurobiological foundation of this uh, and um, kind of what happens neurobiologically in the brain when it comes to PTSD, all right? So there's three components. These are three things that we tend to um, be negatively impacted by uh, when we are developing symptoms of PTSD. And the first is reminders of the traumatic event, and that includes nightmares, flashbacks, right? Those emotional memories coming back up again. You might have night tears, right? You might even begin to hallucinate at times. So hearing, see, hearing and seeing things that are not there that remind you of the event. Um, so we, we get the reminders, okay? And I'm gonna post a little bit more information over here about the traumatic reminders, all right? The second is known as activation. And that's something that happens when we have chronic or acute PTSD. The, the, the parts of, of ourselves or of our brain that has been traumatized is usually triggered uh, by stimuli that's external, right? So we're, we're hyper-focused on things, right? There's hyper-arousal. Central nervous system dominance, meaning that you're in that fight or flight mode, right? So things get activated when you have PTSD, that fight or flight mode kicks in, right? Your body begins to respond to, to stressors. Uh, sometimes flight or fight or flight kicks on when it should not or when it doesn't need to kick on. Um, and that's difficult because a lot of people have panic attacks when they don't need to be having a panic attack, but that's because PTSD is not treated and the system is hyper 
aroused, okay? You're hypervigilant about everything. So the body gets activated. And then we have what's known as deactivation. And that's um, a mode um, of thought or emotion that triggers dissociation, okay? So pulling away from reality, not being able to process reality correctly, not being able to experience reality, right? You're just, your your consciousness or your awareness of, of what's going on, you're pulling away from that, all right? So you're pulling away from reality. Then we have derealization. That's another deactivation stage. We have derealization, and that's when everything around you feels like it's a stage, right? Everything feels false. You feel like you're acting. You feel like you're playing a part. It doesn't feel natural to you. We also have the numbing process, right? You begin to feel numb, dead inside, right? You're not reacting emotionally like you should be you're just numb all right so that's the deactivation so I want you to keep these three uh, stages in mind when somebody has post-traumatic stress disorder or they are meeting criteria for the diagnosis you have reminders you have activation and then you have deactivation okay I'm gonna come back and talk a little bit about a type of therapy used for PTSD it's not fully researched yet but it's a pretty interesting research and it's called written exposure therapy so I'm gonna come back and talk about that next week thank you so much for being with me today in this video I encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you stick around guys and I will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching bye, -bye.